Hello. And thank you for watching. Today, it's all about being an international SEO consultant, which has become more relevant these days. This is due to the increased number of the complexities that every single business wishing to trade internationally is facing at the moment. For example, to the ever-changing customer change, we need to add political changes, political aspects, legislation, supply chain issues, um, the rapid change in the technology landscape as well, diversity, because companies need to learn how to handle their cultural differences uh, in an appropriate manner if they wish to become uh, successful and profitable in those target markets. So as you can see, it goes well beyond choosing the uh, right website architecture, the right type of content, localization, etc., etc., which are also key. Um, so international um, consultants will help businesses to connect the dots to remain competitive in their target markets. To gain a deeper understanding into all of this, what it all means, we've got here Gianluca Fiorelli, who is a strategic international SEO consultant. Hello, Gianluca. How are you? Hello, Monse. I'm really fine. Recently returned from a short vacation, but needed. Yeah, it's always good to have a vacation from time to time, just to kind of switch off and and recharge batteries, isn't it? Yes, and Google was grateful with fear because the, right. the update was terminated just when I came back home. So <laughs> it, it wasn't as some other years happened in the middle of the holidays. Yes, we were lucky this year that the rollout took up. Uh, I think a bit more, a bit longer than usual. <laughs> yeah. So, who are you? Tell us who are you and how did you become an international SEO consultant? Um, I'm an old class SEO in terms of years, uh, which means that I became an SEO in a unusual way. Mm -hmm. uh, I started back in 2004, and at this time, uh, it was still the early years of SEO, even if there are people, no courses, no, even university weren't thinking anything about digital marketing and so on, and even less about SEO. Yeah. So what happened? I, I, had this, I have a professional story before becoming an SEO because I'm 50 three years old so 20 years uh, ago i was for already 40. you don't look so, it <laughs> uh, because i'm rounded so <laughs> i i don't uh, you don't see any room how you call it Re any wrinkles wrinkle? yeah no, exactly no definitely <laughs> uh, so i was working in the tele in uh, television i was the director of programming for movie channels mm -hmm. and I'm going to do, make it very short because it's it's not it's going to be a long story. Uh, around 2003, uh, there was a merge between platform TV cable platform in Italy, mm -hmm. and I was in the wrong one in the acquired cable company. So all the movie channels that I was uh, directing disappeared because they were substantially content duplicate content and. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, they moved me to uh, to the web department. The remaining channels have their own website, and so they decide me. Okay, you know, well, internet classy thing. Uh, why don't you take care of all the content, uh, all the things uh, related to the website? Uh, doing so, I started obviously from content, and when I started to see that we were creating content and it wasn't appearing. I started to understand that there well, was something called SEO. And doing so, uh, then I came from Rome to, to Valencia, thanks to the America's Cup. And, and I stay here. So during these three years of um, America's Cup, 
while I was still working for the television, following where the website, I started to learn uh, SEO. I also started to uh, experiment with SEO, creating a lot of domain, burning a lot of websites. And, uh, and this is how I started. Also, because I sincerely needed to reinvent my my life professionally because here in Valencia there were no opportunity for me in the television field. So I had to substantially these three years to reinvent myself and I reinvented myself as an ECO. And uh, regarding our topic today, international SEO, mm -hmm. uh, I'm Italian. And uh, even if it, Italian is uh, man is consider such a beautiful uh, language of love and music and art is spoken all in Italy. So uh, even the smallest website, uh, if it's not just a, you know, a plumber website with local, hyper local web foreign market, even the smallest website uh, usually has at least an English version. So uh, for me, International SEO and SEO were synonyms. So uh, that's why I start digging into international SEO, what, is, uh, what are its peculiarities, what are both technically, culturally, uh, linguistically, localization, and so on. So it was a, a natural evolution for me to, to, to specialize myself in international SEO. That makes total sense. And it kind of mirrors, it's very similar to my own experience as an SEO as well, because I, I didn't realize at the very beginning I, would, I could call it international SEO. It was SEO, digital marketing, done by a Spaniard in the UK market, in the European market, or in MENA, LATAM, et cetera, et cetera. And it was just um, digital marketing and SEO. And then suddenly it was. Yeah, actually, that's international SEO. And to me, all the complexities, all the linguistic bits and pieces that you were talking about were kind of natural. So I didn't think about categorizing them. <laughs> yeah, and, and moreover, I, I'm an SEO who is not, uh, who doesn't have uh, a technical background. I mean, in 20 years, I build up a technical background, obviously, yeah. because in order to grow and to learn, to just deal with the developers. But I, I'm, I'm graduated in university in history of cinema. That's why I was directing, working in television. I was, it was really consistent with my study. But uh -huh. many of my study when I was in university were all related to semiotics, linguistics, semantics. Yeah. Uh, philosophy or language so uh, everything yeah. that uh, now it's super important you know and then sometimes we see seo lacks of some yeah. seo lacks of but it was also right. really interesting for me because uh, everything of my humanistic study mm -hmm. helped me a lot in order to understand everything like you know when you do inter uh, international seo the most important thing about the technical stuff which is a word aside is understand the culture. And so uh, everything you have maybe study about anthropology, sociology, all humanistic study that mm. sometimes are so neglected in the technical uh, world uh, and industry uh, really helped me. So I was lacking this sense. So combined with my own personal history, also this kind of study I had really gave me a plus for uh, going deeper into international SEO. And also, I have to say that linguistics are kind of fits into many other areas, such as sociology, such as um, psychology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's not like a classed um, yeah. something very, very small that is kind of stays there and doesn't have any uh, effect. It doesn't affect anything else. That's what I meant. Uh, but, I did linguistics at uni as well, and it, I am amazed. I mean, I feel at home when they talk about NLP and algorithms and things like that, semiotics. I mean, it's all related somehow. Yeah, but, and I was also lucky because one of my professors was Umberto Eco, so uh, I had also really, really powerful teachers and professors 
for this kind of topic. So sometimes I smile when I see uh, it's not a critic, obviously, I put my hands <laughs> before. <laughs> it's not a critic, but sometimes I smile when I see these great things about semi. Okay, I studied proactive verbs, how to use the proactive verbs. I mean, Noam Chomsky was writing about proactive verbs in his se semiotics mm, books 30 years ago. So uh, yeah. sometimes see, things that appear as new, as always, and there is this sort of uh, came backs of things that seems new, but actually we talk about them in the past or study in the past, or even when nothing like what we are doing was existing. It was already used. So basically, you've been building up on your background and your previous yes. knowledge and feeding into your your current profession. So what are the main challenges that you can find with your um, uh, within your profession, with your, within your day to day? Um, the biggest challenge is always uh, the problem is always comes if you are not being able, and that was myself, we've not been able, to, to uh, in having a, a really good start. And with a good start, I mean, even before the contract is signed, mm -hmm. to, to have from your potential client or your clients, very, very clear what they want. Because sometimes they there's some idea, because uh, in international SEO, we must distinguish between two big, big situations. Mm -hmm. The website, the company that wants to inter internationalize itself, because it doesn't have a presence international, and companies that already establish it internationally, but especially uh, on a, with a strong physical presence. So, like... Let's say McDonald's is an international SEO, surely, but substantially work, they work like a, a national website because they are so present in the physical uh, geography of the countries they target that uh, they need to have totally distinct and mm -hmm. different type of, uh, of SEO and marketing in general. And then the other web usually is coming with, you know, SEAS, uh, company, or only web-based uh, web company that want to start or need to improve. And lately, since COVID, many B2B companies, even bigger ones, uh, that uh, understood COVID was good in this sense, that they need a strong uh, web presence. So many times they were already present in internationally, mm. but were website in terms of international web SEO were really bad. So uh, returning back, uh, understanding, ma making your client to explain really well what we want. And during this phase, asking to the client all the limitations they have. You were talking about logistic and uh, laws and things. As I say, with experience, we learn these kind of things. But uh, every time there is some surprise. Uh, for instance, in the pharmaceutical industry, you have to know that some kind of products cannot be sold in the given countries. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the company has a very, very weird um, logistic. Uh, so you have to consider all this logistic when you are planning the architecture of international SEO in order to make the potential customer going to the right website, depending on the logistic. Or it happens, for instance, in travel, that the clients, they have very different price policy, depending mm -hmm. on the country. So uh, how to make uh, the user going to the one you, to, to the correct version in order to pay the correct price for them, Something which is not possible for everything in Euro uh, Union, uh, European Union because of law. And mm -hmm. this is another thing you have to explain to clients. So once you are able to obtain all this information, 
which also mean to ask the client to let us talk with commercial, with uh, clients uh, and customer care, uh, all the local uh, uh, targeted countries with uh, the marketing team, but not just the marketing team, digital marketing team, with the marketing team by large, which can mean also off-site and so on. When you are able to retrieve all of this information, you can really start working well and then preparing uh, a good strategy. And from there, um, going down to tactics. Obviously, there is also the, the technical side. But the technical side in international SEO is somehow a world apart because you can work it uh, in parallel without even counting for content. Only when it comes to localization and content that needs some technical uh, capabilities, then obviously the two um, spheres are colliding. Mm -hmm. But if not, the technical SEO is, usually we are talking about HRF flag. But it's not just the HRF flag. I mean, sometimes yeah. the biggest problem is not even the HRF flag. The biggest exactly. problem maybe Goes is this. Quite beyond. Yeah, yes, maybe the biggest problem is, is, is the same CMS. Hmm. Because sometimes you have a CMS which is creating issues that are uh, impeding you to have a normal website, a correct website, and therefore everything related to international SEO is uh, in terms of issues or problems is amplified because this is the biggest uh, difference between normal SEO, let's call it so, which is just targeting one website on a country um, and in a country like which is not Switzerland or even Spain or the Netherlands, which, the, which have multilingual, which are actually multilingual. Yeah. Um, so the big difference is this one that you have to really know, for instance, technical SEO by normal technical SEO really, really well uh, before even knowing international technical SEO. Because you have to uh, substantially tell to the people that, okay, if you want to succeed internationally, if you want Google to crawl, uh, index, and then distribute what is indexing in the right places, you must have your website not 100% correct, 200% correct. So you, usually this is also the reason you have to fix canonicalization, uh, indexing issues, scrolling issue, etc., etc., etc. before even just thinking about how to use the HTML lang or the HRF lang. And then Google in every single market behaves in a different way because the changes. Oh, totally, that have totally. Been... Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, I still remember one thing that um, Gary, Gary Ellis of Google mm. once said, uh, responding to a tweet quite many years ago. There was one people, one person who was shaming Google and saying, okay, we are doing all this penguin stuff and so on, but still in this country are ranking really spammy website. Mm -hmm. And he said, we know. The problem is that in your country, there are not so many websites about your topic and we must present something. So uh, we somehow downgrade the value uh, of a spam link algorithm yeah. in order to present something which can be valuable. So sometimes you have to encounter these kind of things. You are maybe, uh, let's say, in the digital PR field, you can use it wonderfully in countries like UK, uh, United States, uh, even other countries in Europe and the Western country. Uh, but then you have to know that in some other countries, uh, promotion is totally different. And uh, not because they are spammers, but because their mentality is different. If you want to promote, you have to pay. I mean, you have to pay also in yeah. in UK and the US. But for instance, uh, I remember in China, I'm, I do international SEO, but I must recognize that there are certain kind of 
countries, but I prefer to delegate the job to uh, people who are expert, for instance, in Baidu or Naver, mm. uh, because uh, the language and cultural uh, gap for me is too big to, to be able to, to offer a, a decent uh, service. But for instance, I, uh, I was reading and I, I've talked with uh, Chinese SEO and we were saying, okay, people is in, in Europe, you are usually, uh, you are used to contact through email, yes, but also through other means. In China, no, it's really formal. It's only by email. If you are contacting me for a, a link, uh, not by email and being very formal, I skip you. You are, you are even, I'm going even to consider you spammer, which yes. is all usually the contrary of what happens here. We receive tons of emails that we just flag immediately as spam. Just because we are telling we have this parasite SEO strategy, yes, Hon. horrible terms, parasite SEO. Uh, and so, yes, we, we have all of these different, and this is the nice things of international SEO at the end. You are not just walk, talking about, for instance, Spanish people uh, all times, knowing what the Spanish people think, even with all the context, the cultural contents. And, sociological context that different context that may have one country but if you are curious about other culture internationally say oh is wow the best it's very exciting for us from talking from experience uh, encountering all these um issues all these variables all these aspects because it just makes it even more interesting than, say, normal, regular um, SEO, I think. Um, but yeah, this is also about recognizing that sometimes uh, it can be a bit big for us. Baidu, for example, I have worked in Baidu, is actually very different from Google. Oh, yes. And Naver, Naver is, is even Naver, worse yes. because Naver is not even a web a, a search engine. No. I mean, Naver <laughs> is more, it's like trying to do SEO. What is the most similar thing that I can imagine for other people to understand is like making SEO for msn.com <laughs> because it's uh, somehow a new, a mix between a news and social platform. It's not a search engine. So it is not. It's a, it's just essentially it's you have to know someone who is Korean, yeah, and who knows really well how to, uh, even if it's meaningful to try to do some SEO for never, because it's sometimes you you want to. It is better to create a social media strategy for never instead of an SEO, because of how much UGC, how much social uh, interaction and user signals are important for Nava. Yeah, the APAC markets are notoriously more difficult than any other markets I have ever worked in, definitely. And we haven't even mentioned Japan yet. <laughs> very, very complex. Uh, well, yeah, yes. But Japan, thankfully, is, I mean, it's Yahoo, but it's Google at the end of the day. So in terms of algorithm, it's not, uh, I mean, it's uh, in terms of localization. Yes, it's like doing SEO for Mars. It's yeah. a totally <laughs> different planet. But uh, in terms of algorithm, at least we know uh, how to correct things technically. Uh, this is a great well, plus. Yeah, yeah. That, I guess that's that's a, the only advantage that I can find in terms of all this uh, sea of difficulty that it is doing marketing yeah. in general in in Japan, for example, or in a, the APAC markets. Yeah. yeah, but very there is another thing that makes international this SEO more complex than classic SEO, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure you agree, is that you need to be even if you are a consultant, uh, you need to, as we say in, in Spanish, uh, don de gente. We must be really able to yeah. um, Soft skills. work with and coordinate the work, not only of different departments, like developers, graphics, content writers, all these three and more, but multiplied 
for all the version the website is targeting, is yeah. uh, developing. So, because uh, this is, especially when it comes to content, is particularly stressful and difficult because uh, you have to coordinate all this work in order to make it sustainable mm -hmm. because the biggest part of the budget usually finally go to localization. And yes. so you have to propose to the client um, because not every client is Nike. So uh, we've reduced budget to coordinate all this kind of work in order to make it consistent, but still with a proper uh, unique voice for each version, language, or especially country. So you have to have this ability to coordinate with people and to being able to gratify each single depart country department, but also able not to offend one or the other. So this is like really you have, somehow you have to have a diplomatic skill hmm. quite high for making work, everybody works well and following what has been your strategy and make it uh, real. Yes, because soft skills are yeah. super important, super important. Wherever you work, wherever you go, wherever you work, it's super important to be able to reach out to the people you need to reach out and, as you say, coordinate yeah, the different aspects of the work. Yeah, that's the work in, soft skill. Yeah, soft skill, yeah. Well, but whenever you work internationally, it's even, it's even worse because you need to learn that the cultural differences of working with those people, they need to learn about you as well. And so transparency, for example, is, is key. So I was, I was going to ask you actually about how do you coordinate with, say, developers? Because one of the biggest issues that we've got as SEOs or in marketing in general is the implementation of those um, recommendations that we make. How do you coordinate? How, have you found mm. it even more difficult? With developers as no, well? No, not really, not really. Uh, I mean, uh, the first thing that, that this is in general, not just for international SEO, it's in general. Because I think that in this case, the developers are all equal independently from the nationality they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they are built like this in a, in a, <laughs> in a, fur, in a fabric and a, in a plant, like with a stamp. They are all equal. In mentality, they are really proud of their work, hmm. and you have to know that they are really proud of their work, even if it's shit. To yeah. be to be clear, and so what I usually do is when I I audit a website, obviously when there is something so clearly wrong, I I go and say this is really wrong. But usually when I present a recommendation, I try n always not to present just one recommendation. I try to see, depending on the technical stack on which your website is based, mm. to present two or even more solutions to an issue. In order to um, being able to offer the, the developers alternatives, because what um, push the developers into a defensive mode is when they you are, uh, you are telling them that they must do this and only this. Yes. So I try always to put them some um, alternatives. And as I was saying before, uh, let's talk with a client really, really well. Let's talk with the developers before starting the audit in order to understand how they built the website, what they used, what was the stack, what was the biggest difficulties they had, what if they did some creative, uh, found some creative solution to a problem and so on. So in order to understand really well what they did, so giving them the importance they deserve. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, in, this is also helpful for you to understand why you are seeing something. Because having this knowledge, previous knowledge, you can understand that, okay, they are having all these duplicate issue because of uh, parameters, for instance, uh, because they are using this kind of CMS. 
let's say Adobe, uh, one of the Adobe ones that I hate them. And uh, because of this, um, we, we are doing this. So let's find solution within the stack and how to find a compromise eventually. Because sometimes with the developers, it's really talking about finding a, a compromise uh, for solving something. Mm -hmm. So what do you think or what would you advise any other um, consultants, inter um, SEO consultants wishing to work internationally to have? What are the characteristics do you think that define us? Soft skill, as we were talking right now. Uh, a deep technological SEO. I don't mean developers. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a developer, as I was telling before, but uh, knowing what are the things that can cause the failure of technical international SEO. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, more than knowing how the HRF flag works, knowing why the HRF flag doesn't work. So, you have to know canonicalization, you have to know how search engine uh, crawl and index a website, so the meta robots, the robot TXT, all these classic things. Of technical SEO, and then being open-minded, be curious. If you are something that we know we do every time, also with national SEO, let's call it so. Uh, when we have a client uh, in a niche which we don't know, we usually study that niche in order to understand, uh, starting to work. And in international SEO, you have to add. Uh, the cultural learning. If you are starting to, let's say, uh, target uh, Arabic countries, you have to know how the Arabic and how the Arab Arabs, Arabic countries, uh, people, uh, things and mm -hmm. behave. How do we search? Um, for instance, one something that I'm not you so much every time able to to do it, but one times one one of the things that I do. It's asking the client to do user um, focus group, uh, but with people searching on Google in, in their country, in the country they want to target, in order to start understanding what are their behavior. We, you know that I, in, in the past two years, I talk a lot about the messy middle and how yes. Google wants to people to to guide people in in the search journey inside Google. So, but this uh, work inside Google channel with just a couple of clicks and search, they are fine. Others are really going deeper and deeper and deeper, and like the old time surfing of the beginning of the internet. So. This is something that you have to add to your knowledge. It's not only uh, knowing the technical side, but knowing the st study culturally the niche in the country. And, um, and then I have with that also um, being really able to, uh, everything related to competitive, competitive analysis, mm. you must excel on it. Because uh, usually you cannot think that the same competitors, global competitors you have, are the most uh, risky ones. Your the real competitors. Sometimes totally. you have to know to know that many local companies, many local websites, are even stronger than some big international company present in in all the one hundred in 93 countries recognized by the United Nations. So sometimes um, for, I have, a, I can say it, I have a, um, a case, which is a client of mine, which is a website only targeting Italian in the travel industry, in the mm -hmm. specific niche of Sardinia, and it's stronger than uh, Booking, Trivago, TripAdvisor, and so on for the specific niche, which is an important niche in the travel industry, Italian travel industry in Italy. And this is a national website, a national SEO. For this website, we don't do any international thing. So you have to really be able to individuate those local competitors from which you can learn more than 
trying to copy cut what big other companies are doing international in international SEO. From there, analyzing both websites, you really can learn. And obviously, you have to adapt it to your strategy because sometimes we are not entering in the classic sub, sub, sub folder, CC, TLD, subdomain, because if this is something that maybe we need more, more than the time we, we have for this talk. Yeah. But I mean, you, have, uh, you are going to consider all these things, you have to understand better from local competitors than from big international ones. So in other words, just to summarize all that, you need to consider that every single market is different. And not because we say Latin, Europe, North America, et cetera, et cetera, we are going to have the same market. They are not going to be speaking the same language, or even if they do, they will be speaking in a, in a different way. Different cultural backgrounds, different baggage, different everything that you need to be able to understand competitors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and this is, and this is something that perhaps sets us apart: the fact that we are used to kind of delving into all of these uh, different markets kind of easily. It comes naturally as well with, you know, living abroad, perhaps, or or having lived abroad in my case, or any other thing. Yes. <laughs> Uh, one other thing I would add about the skill that an international SEO must have is a really big ability in uh, planning and prioritizing things. Oh, yes, definitely. Because um, let's say we have a, an example, a website targeting several countries in Europe plus other several countries around the world plus having an international version in the most important languages. Mm. Uh, you cannot think, even if the normal situation is that no, the website doesn't have uh, a specific theme for each country. So uh, you have really to understand how to prioritize the work. I mean, on the technical side, it's not a problem, mm. but um, you do the classic prioritization uh, you do for a a normal website, but for everything like content creation, localization, optimization, okay. promotion, you have really to understand what are the countries you have to prioritize, what are the countries that you can work on level B, what are the level C, and uh, what are maybe a country that you are first are saying it's level B, but we we can see from the data that it has a huge opportunity just doing something better and moving up in priority. And so the client can start having a better revenue. So pushing from, let's say, uh, talking uh, in terms of football from the second league to the Premier League. <laughs> uh, and so this is really important. And uh, sometimes this is what m you have finished the audit and and the strategy and you have to to put the mythical spreadsheet with all the priorities sometimes this is what makes you spend more time and maybe uh, asking the client give me a couple of days more because <laughs> before the delivery because i really need to give you a good prioritization because if you are making making it wrong i mean you are going to do the things but maybe you are going to waste time, waste uh, especially money, uh, and seeing the results, good results later. So this is another really important skill. And you have to be, you have to be really um, on the ball as to what exactly is happening in that market too, because um, as, you were, as we, were, we were saying earlier, things do change from market to market. So we don't really want to have like a product, a product launch like it happens. I think it was in 2021 or 2022 with Xbox in Germany. Oh, yes. um, 
Yeah, it was it was really really famous. Everybody was talking about that terrible localization that they did with not just the words, not just the words, it's just the functionality as well, or the hello translation or localization in Spanish uh, that left um, um, a few gamers a bit puzzled as to what exactly it is yeah. that it meant, it meant here. Uh, you, you have to be very careful with, with all that. And uh, one thing that I have found uh, I have found out when working internationally is that the coordination needs to be incredibly, incredibly big, incredibly strong because um, there is a tendency for SEO and the different um, UX, different um, aspects of marketing, working in silos. So you have to be very, very much aware who is doing what in UX or in development, et cetera, et cetera, just to make sure that this product launch, uh, whenever there is a product launch or a website that needs to be, that needs to be reviewed or written, um, it's, it's, it's actually up to scratch. because. Um, it's a lot easier to do from the very beginning rather than having to fix an issue that happens after launch. Oh, yes. Yes, totally. Uh, sometimes when uh, in international SEO, the backlash of a, of a bad localization are really hard because it is not just, okay, we are, did a bad translation. <laughs> not that bad. It's um, we can have that. We enter in the online reputation management. I, I mean, if your web, if a website or a landing page or whatever is not well localized, so not speaking the tongue of a local user, hmm. uh, the first thing is damage is the brand. So you have it, 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 when the brand is starting to be damaged mm -hmm. for this thing, kind of things, it's really hard. To, to reverse the situation. So you have to rest. That's why I usually say the international SEO is like a giant Sudoku. <laughs> because you have to Indeed. consider so many things and it's really sincerely pissing me off that international SEO, when it comes to uh, talks, when it comes to uh, post, uh, Twitter, social chatting, is always reviews to href line. When sometimes, if you are doing it multilingual SEO, you don't even need href line many times. Yeah, you have to consider what you need every single time. And um, I was really pleased when I read these tweets, or if I can still call it tweet, <laughs> by John Mueller praising international ah, SEO. Answering to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, Johnny is a really kind dude. He, he has a really high reputation of us international SEO. Uh, I think because uh, I think he, I don't I don't know if he has a past as international SEO, but I being in Switzerland, uh, I think he, he can understand the difficulties of a multilingual and multi-country SEO. Which is great coming from somebody who works at Google, actually. <laughs> yes, yes. And in fact, that's, uh, maybe we have to thank him and the search team. No, but, uh, I don't know how to call it because it's not even more web trans team. But uh, like oh, the big team of communicators of Google, uh, in Google that they are finally starting to update all the documentation. We just saw an update a couple of um, couple of days ago. You know, we say we saw Gary Hill is finally updating all the documentation about the X HRF line X default, mm -hmm. uh, which was totally uh, let's say not actual uh, and dated 2012. Mm -hmm. So it was 10 years old, 11 years old, and totally not. Uh, trustable as a documentation. So thankfully, all this kind of information about international SEO is coming out. And I'm also thankful to see, um, once it was just, let's say, me, you, Aleida, and a few others 
uh, doing international SEO and exposing publicly uh, all of these uh, things about international SEO. And it's nice to see now more people uh, uh, interested in international SEO and presenting their findings, uh, presenting their issues, their troubles publicly. And so there is more chatting. And we are, once we were a little niche, both weird guys doing international SEO mm -hmm. and not JavaScript SEO, not mobile first SEO or something like this. And uh, now we are starting to attain the right visibility uh, because we deserve it. Sincerely, <laughs> not just because I'm an international SEO, but because, I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult. So it is uh, difficult. If, we, if we do this, and I think all of us can. I mean, I had my amount of fails, fails in international SEO with clients, I must admit it, but I also had a lot of successes. Mm -hmm. So it's good for us, international SEO, to, to start showing this, our success, to explain why we failed. Uh, assume our guilty, our failures, and to be recognized. Yeah, it's a complicated field, but I think it, all this recognition is coming after diversity itself has been given the um, praise that it deserves as well. Um, so companies uh, having to, you know, to face the fact that they have to learn about cultural differences and different languages and other bits and pieces that come with it. I'm making I'm making it a lot easier for us, I think. But I think that um, what happened, especially in the past, is that international SEO, as it was my history, my story, your own story, uh, many other people's story, we were not, let's say, Anglo-Saxon. We were not Americans. We were not UK. Mm -hmm. And especially in the past, where was somehow this sort of prejudice about SEO not coming from the uh, UK, US um, field, yeah. <laughs> especially in terms of companies, not in terms of community. And therefore, uh, international SEO wasn't seen, wasn't under the focus. Um, and it's fun because uh, now that globalization is in crisis, mm -hmm. if we talk in terms of geopolitics, uh, uh, in terms of the commerce of uh, economy is going really strong. Uh, so all these people that uh, are really, especially in companies, started to, okay, there are these people. Maybe they don't have our accent, mm -hmm. but they know what we do. And especially it was also thanks, we must recognize it, that uh, people in the SEO community from the United States, for instance, Glenn Gabe, started to have international SEO project and started to talk about international SEO. So also thanks to these people that we uh, started to see a bigger interest on international SEO, even if, I must admit, Glenn Gable was, wasn't telling some, anything new respect what we were already saying. But we have also to thank these kind of people that, okay, we have allies in the community that are started to present us in this way. Then obviously there are stars like Aleida that is a star by her own. So uh, she always put, I mean, international SEO, so she put international SEO under the focus. And so we had the opportunity to grow and to grow in terms of visibility. And this is really important for us because, um, not just because we need work or we want to work, but because um, it's putting the correct attention to certain things. Uh, many people are talking about parasite SEO, niche SEO, uh, but companies, what they want is to expand themselves. Because they will need grow. more markets to grow. And if uh, one thing is wonderful of SEO, which is always, but this is a problem of SEO in general, neglected uh, in comparison with other channels like social media, for instance, is that uh, SEO has 
one privilege. The SEO are the ones that easily get to know how people think. Yeah. More That's than a social, in social media, because in social media, people fake. <laughs> uh, in SEO, they are truly themselves when they search things. And not, all, not just that, how, they, how do they search? Uh, what is their surgery? We are the first understanding what something is starting to be trendy. Uh, what something is starting to be trending and to stay and what something is going to be trending and okay, it's worth just for news checking. And so in, in, in international SEO, as all the problems can be multiplied for X, X times, mm -hmm. also this kind of knowledge and, and opportunities are multiplied because we can see, okay, in the United States, it's becoming something trendy. We know that culturally, everything from the States is, will become in a matter of few months internet, uh, mainstream also in the Western world. Or maybe there's some fashion coming out from South Korea. We know that it's going in the Gen Z, Gen Z, mm -hmm. uh, Generation Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to be really popular just in one week because of TikTok. Because we, you were talking about silo. It's not just silo between departments. It's also silo between cha channels. The channels. I don't do digital marketing as a as a consultant, mm -hmm. but I know that I must analyze uh, what customers and searchers use combined with search in order to find that's something. Right. So that's why TikTok, even if I don't like TikTok at all, at all as a user, I know that I must do it. I know that I must, I must use it, for instance, for uh, doing keyword research. Mm -hmm. Using the TikTok suggest is what is a fantastic way to do local search and local uh, keyword research. Or, Keyword research in general, or keyword uh, TikTok trendings, YouTube trending, or something like this. Uh, it's a fascinating word, really complex. Yes. But I mean, with it's it's the classic work that you learn to do with years and years and years of practice. Years of experience. That's right. Uh, which um, companies can actually use to their own. With their own behalf, yeah, really, when they want to grow and to expand into other countries. And it, it is never more relevant than right now, to be honest. But it, it, and it is good that we are um, a bit more on the spotlight these days, simply because, not just because of that, but also because, as you said, the work is complex. It really is complicated. Because as marketers, uh, working in marketing, we need to um, learn keep in touch with the real world and keep updated at all times. But when we work internationally, that actually gets um, expanded, so, so to speak. No? We need to learn even more of what is going on in those countries, in different markets, in different markets that you are. Because sometimes, even if you're not working in a specific market, that whatever it is happening in there can actually happen elsewhere. And a very good example is SGE, Search Generative Experience, which is being tested in the UK, oh, sorry, in the US market. That is only for the US market at the moment, but it's going to be rolled out elsewhere later on. So we need to learn what is happening there, what the impressions yep. are. And there are very good blog posts about that because later on we are prepared for whenever it comes to the UK, whenever it is rolled out in Italy, in the Netherlands, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Totally. So, totally. Uh, just last thing, what do you do to switch off from international marketing or international SEO? What, what do you do for, you know, to, to kind of, uh, you know, discharge batteries? Uh, so let me move a little bit to the camera. Uh, uh, if you see in the shelf, the upper shelf. Yes. Mm, well, there is, okay. There, there are some minis. Uh, uh, as I also share on Twitter and 
Instagram and Facebook. Uh, uh, I paint miniatures with uh, acrylic oil, acrylic painting, oil painting. It's uh, really relaxing. It's an hobby that I always said, uh, inherited from my father. And that I left for many, many years. And then during COVID, because we had to spend time, yeah. uh, how to spend time <laughs> at home uh, without going crazy, uh, I retook. And uh, this is a really nice way to spend time without thinking. It's, not, it's like when, uh, you know, this classic advertisement, learn German sleeping. Something like this. Uh, you have your things, your your days at work or your own um, issues, your own things. Uh, but you start uh, painting. You are formally concentrated on that. But in the background, many of the good ideas that I had were when I was painting because you are totally relaxed. Yes. And so you're doing that. Then I'm quite, I'm, I'm not this kind of person who likes to do, you know, hiking, super adventure sports. I, I'm quite normal in the sense I read a lot. Never I read marketing books. I hate them. I find them really boring. <laughs> I like novel, uh, history books, uh, shine fiction. And obviously, I have my past in uh, history of cinema and television, so I love to watch movies, to rewatch them, to analyze them, and to, to watch series. And just, just that. This is how I switch off from work, obviously. <laughs> there is also family, so I spend time with family. Those are very good hobbits to be had, especially the miniature painting, right? Rather different from anything else that you might do in your in your life. I, yes, I discovered that there is a quite good community of uh, SEO miniature painters out there. All right. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah. I'm mostly painting Warhammer stuff, mm -hmm. so Game Worship. Uh, I'm more in, into, into classic painting of classic figures or shy fiction, shy, shy fiction figures, but there is a quite good number of SEO painting or even using 3D printing to, to sculpt uh, miniatures. So it's a nice community. Ah, oh, that's really good. And I've seen some of those miniatures that you have been posting. I really, really like them. So that's, that's admirable, really, because you have you have a very good pulse <laughs> to be able to. Uh, to All right, it's just a technique to um, how to <laughs> to stay well in uh, well posed, and so you are not. The most important thing is uh, having a good, uh, you know, how you call it. Because I, I, I have a certain age and I started to, I cannot see. Uh, so I had to use my magnifying glasses. I'm really ridiculous with them put on, but uh, sometimes, yes. Uh, but it's fine because it's somehow similar to SEO. You have to, there are many, many techniques and so you have to combine them. Mm. I see, so, yes. That's something to And it's creative. And it's creative. Right. So thank you so much, Gianluca, for for this, uh, for, for your for talking to us about the life of an international SEO consultant. You can you. catch uh, Gianluca Fiorelli at his website, which I will post on the blog post and also the transcription. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you to you. And it was really great to spend this hour with you. Yeah, it's, it's great to talk everybody. to everybody. <laughs> Bye. Ciao.